welcome to this episode of History Hunters. I'm outside of Lathrop, California, along the San Joaquin River. That trestle behind me, it was the last piece of the puzzle to connect the East Coast and the West Coast on the Transcontinental Railroad. If you've studied the Transcontinental Railroad, you know that the ceremony at Promontory Point, Utah, in which they drove the Golden Spike, I believe the two parties were Leland Stanford and Grenville Dodge, representing the two different railroads. You probably thought that ceremony signified the end of the construction, but that's not the case. There was not a connection all the way to the Oakland Long Wharf. This trestle here was actually required to complete that section and it was done after the Golden Spike was driven in May of 1869. Sarah's enjoying this little bird up in the tree, singing a song. See him? He's got a bunch of different calls, or she, I don't know. You can see some brave souls went up there and took their spray paint and wrote their names up there. Wouldn't advise it. How do you think they get up there and tag that? There's a staircase. Yeah, Sarah just pointed out that there's a ladder on the far right column, goes all the way to the top. I've actually been up a water tower 80 feet and I'm telling you, it's the scariest thing you've ever done. Off in that direction is east, all the way to Council Bluff, Iowa. This was the last stretch of the railroad that had to be installed before you could actually get from coast to coast. That bridge up there is stamped 1942. The current bridge is the third bridge on the site. The original trestle of 1869 consisted of a wooden tower in the center and sat on a turntable that swung the bridge parallel to the river to allow steamer ships to pass. The bridge was a single track wooden truss which served until 1895 when the railroad, now named the Southern Pacific, replaced it with a steel truss bridge. As a measure during World War II, the railroad built this bridge in 1942, a double track Warren through truss vertical lift bridge. To complete the Transcontinental Railroad after the Gold Spike was driven in Utah, the western leg of 133 miles had to be constructed between Sacramento and Oakland by going around the Delta by way of Lathrop. The project was built by the San Francisco and San Jose Railroad and the Western Pacific Railroad. Sarah the Daredevil, look at that. Now, 2021, there's houses all around this bridge, but at the time it was just this virgin territory of the Central Valley where nothing much was happening other than wheat growing. My audio cable became disconnected in this shot, but I was about to find out how rickety the 79 year old bridge actually is when one of the ties began to tip under my weight. I know, I know, we shouldn't have been there in the first place, but we managed to get away safely. We didn't see a train the entire time that we visited this park. San Joaquin River flows all the way to the San Francisco Bay from the lower part of the San Joaquin Valley. For several months before the Mossdale Bridge was completed, passengers traveling from Sacramento to the Bay Area got off the train east of the river and rode a ferry across the river to an awaiting train headed west across the Altamont Pass to Niles and then to the Alameda Ferry Slip, crossing the bay to San Francisco. It was on September 8, 1869 that the Mossdale Bridge was put into service. It created the last link to make it possible for train travelers using several railroad lines to connect the Atlantic and the Pacific. I can't say if that concrete support there is original back to 1869, 
I'm going to assume that it's a new structure that was put in place here when this bridge was built in 1942. But if you look over here, a lot of vandals <laughs> have decided they're going to use this as their canvas. In the 1840s, 50s, and 60s, the only way to go west to California from the developed eastern half of the United States was a rough six-month journey by ship or overland by way of horse or oxen-pulled wagons. The journey took months of hard and extremely hazardous travel. Many died during the trek. The Transcontinental Railroad changed all that. It was a huge effort spanning seven years with the Central Pacific Railroad starting in Sacramento, California and laying 690 miles of track eastward through the rugged Sierra Nevada. Meanwhile, the Union Pacific Railroad started from Iowa and laid 1,086 miles of track before finally meeting in Utah. The railroad fundamentally changed the country, allowing the movement of goods and resources in the West to the Eastern markets easier than before. It also facilitated westward expansion, escalating conflicts between Native American tribes and settlers who now had easier access to the new territories. The town of Lathrop began in 1869 when Central Pacific Railroad set up a canvas tent town to house workers. The town was originally known as Wilson Station, but railroad magnate Leland Stanford later named it after his wife Jane's family, whose maiden name happens to be Lathrop. When President Warren Harding died in San Francisco in 1923, they loaded up his body, the funeral train, moved into the Central Valley of California, moved across this trestle right here. I know it that went to Auburn, California, went to Reno, Nevada, and all the way back to the nation's capital where he lie in state. Of course, President Calvin Coolidge took over at that point. And since we're talking about the first transcontinental railroad, let's talk about how the first transcontinental highway, the Lincoln Highway, also ran right through the same location after its dedication in 1913. You can't tell by looking at this spot today, but this is where the famous Lincoln Highway ran beneath the approaches to the train trestle. In this location, thousands of early day automobile travelers made a turn on their way between Stockton and the Altamont Pass into the Bay Area. In this 1925 aerial photograph, you can clearly see how the highway turned underneath the trestle, where there was a garage, hotel, store, and school. The road was later rerouted around this location to the south and was later abandoned. There's no sign of it today. On the way out, we found a marker situated on Manthe Road celebrating the 1846 arrival of the Comet, which was the first sailing ship to navigate up the San Joaquin River from the San Francisco Bay Area. It carried 20 Mormon pioneers who settled here to farm. In 1848, a ferry was set up here operated by men named Doak and Bonsell. Mossdale Landing is named for Captain William Sims Moss, who came out to California in 1856. He also made his way up the river to the ferry here and fell in love with the place, so he bought the ferry, changing its name to Moss Ferry. He later purchased 10,000 acres of farmland, a very profitable venture. He shuttled his wealth back to the Bay Area where he started the San Francisco Examiner, later selling the newspaper to U.S. Senator George Hurst. Moss died in 1883 and is buried in Stockton. We want to thank you for watching this episode of History Hunters. We appreciate you leaving a comment, giving us a thumbs up, and if you haven't already done so, subscribing and hitting the notification bell.